Hello, welcome to the News at 10, live on NT News 24, and we're reaching you from Abuja, and Comfort and Modu. The headlines. Federal government inaugurates Board of National Hatch Commission. Tackling insecurity challenges, Senate passes bill seeking control of proliferation of small arms and light weapons. Financial and economic professionals enjoin government to adopt ingenuity in 2024 budget implementation. Lifting of sanctions on Niger, Burkina Faso and Mali, members of border and business communities await reopening. President Bola Tinubu is once again reassuring Nigerians that the country will come out of the current foundational challenge stronger and more prosperous. He said these when he visited members of Afenivere, a pan Yoruba group in Akure Undo state capital. Correspondent Musbat Nwahab reports. Once more, President Bola Tinubu returns to the means of his social political group, Afenifere. The presidential toga, notwithstanding, here is due respect to one of the foremost leaders of the Pan Yoruba group, Pa Ruben Fashorotzi. Apparently, an appreciation of the support he got from the group before and during the 2023 presidential election. And now, he has returned with his prize as the President, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Afeniferi identifies with his success. So, with one of them at the hems of affairs, the group is pressing for constitutional and other reforms that would guarantee a more secure and prosperous future for the country. We want each of the geopolitical zones to have greater responsibility for security, food production, and infrastructural development. Since the removal of fuel subsidy, which was costing Nigeria some $10 billion a year, the state governments have been receiving healthy allocations from the federation account. Mr. President, Mr. President, to persuade the governors to allow this chain of fortune for the state to reflect at the grassroots. With the display of full understanding of the current situation in Nigeria, President Sinubu likened the situation to his initial experience as the then Lagos State Governor, which he said has now transformed the state to the leading economy amongst the Nigerian states. And in his renewed hope message, the President assures that with a little more perseverance by Nigerians and bold transformative decisions, Nigeria is on its way to becoming a self-sufficient nation. We are going to turn the twists and bends, and we are going to strengthen the road for prosperity and hope of Nigeria. We go back to the farm, grow what we eat, feed ourselves. Don't depend on on the clamor for true federalism, President Sinubu says the process is in the works. Nigeria will survive. Nigeria is a very light at the end of this story. I ask for the job. I am not complaining. I can pay for it. I dance for it. Yes. I pray for it. So. I got it. I take the responsibility. The president is now in Lagos on a working visit. From Lagos, 
Musbao, Nanwahab, NC News. Our President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is on a walking visit to Lagos, but he will be departing for a two-day official visit to the state of Qatar to further strengthen cooperation between the two nations in several areas today, including security, cultural exchange and economic development. This is to honor an invitation by His Highness Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, Emir of the state of Qatar. During the visit, President Tinubu will witness the signing of several agreements focused on boosting Nigerians' real sector and creating value additive investment across the fields of trade, education, culture, solid minerals, digital economy, agriculture and gas, as well as fostering cooperation on counter-terrorism. The President will also participate in a business and investment forum that will bring together top-level executives in both the private and public sectors of Nigeria and Qatar to advance cross-sectoral opportunities for mutually beneficial growth and development. The President will be accompanied on the trip by senior government officials for the signing of agreements. And still from the executive, the federal government has inaugurated the newly constituted Board of National Heart Commission of Nigeria with a call on the members to introduce innovations in its operations. State House correspondent Abraham Manjubrilla reports that Vice President Kashim Shetima taxed the members to work as a team to bring fresh perspective to the operations of the Commission and he urged the new management to improve on the Hatch Savings Scheme to boost the number of programs participating in the exercise across the country. And Vice President Shetima challenged the board to engage agents to foster a long-term relationship that will make significant capital investment in operations. Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the new board, Malam Jalal Arabi, commended President Tinubu and Vice President Shetima for finding them worthy to pilot the affairs of NACO board. In talking health matters, reforms in the health sector under the Renewed Hope mantra are being carefully designed to transform and harness Nigerian's health potential into a productive sector beyond consumables. A coordinator, Minister of Health and Social Welfare, Professor Ali Pate, said these are the third edition of the ministerial press briefing and also reaffirmed the adoption of a tactical approach to deal with outbreak of diseases in Nigeria. Salu Gwanara reports. Globally, human migration has exposed some nations with the syndrome of brain drain, particularly in the health sector. Even though Nigeria is not an exception from this global trend, the coordinating Minister of Health and Social Welfare reemphasized that deliberate policies are being initiated for renewal of health infrastructure that will add value and unlock health care value chain. Over the last uh, several months, 2,497 doctors, nurses and midwives have been recruited in our primary health care centers to fill gaps and to help in delivering services. And hundreds of thousands of Nigerians have been enrolled in the health insurance program through the National Health Insurance Scheme and the Vulnerable Groups Fund. The ministry, he added, is mobilizing vaccine to mitigate outbreaks and enhance social engagement. The National Consultative Forum on Health and Human Capital is also provided for by law, but until this administration, that has not happened. So we are uh, organizing to have a consultative forum of all our traditional leaders, religious leaders from all parts of the country to engage them on this reform. The host, Minister of Information and National Orientation, reaffirmed some reforms towards nation building with reference to the resolutions of the Federal Executive Council meeting held earlier in the week. Government wants to reduce costs, also improve efficiency, in service delivery. Now, this does not necessarily mean that government is out to retrench or to throw people out of the labor market. That is not the original intention. The intention is that efficiency has to be brought in because some of these price starters are actually uh, having some overlap overlaps in the way they do their, their operations. This is a platform for ministries stewardship to be assessed and project their policies for nation building. In Abuja, Saliu Guanara, NTA News. 
Our prioritise and the need to tackle the challenge of insecurity. Senate has passed a bill that seeks to control the proliferation of small arms and light weapons in Nigeria. National Assembly correspondent Lani Ami reports. Small arms and light weapons in Nigeria and for little matters 2024. The arms control bill is for concurrence from the House of Representatives. Senate leader Obeyemi Bamidele highlights merits of the bill before its passage. Seeks to provide for the establishment of a center to coordinate and implement activities to combat the proliferation of small arms and light weapons in our country. In line with the United Nations, the African Union, and the ECOWAS Convention, we are all aware of the avalanche of small arms and light weapons that is spread across the nooks and crannies of this country that has given non-state actors access to these small arms and light weapons and terrorizing our communities in form of Boko Haram, banditry, kidnapping, and what have you. It is assuming even a greater uh, urgency uh, now that we have so much security problems, especially in the Northwest. So I think this is something that uh, should be uh, supported. Built to establish David Omahi University of Health, sponsored by Senate Deputy Majority Whip Mwebongi Ongeka, also passed second reading. For the purposes of training medical doctors, nurses and other allied medical professionals, bill from Senator Tony Mugi seeking the inclusion of an number state as a member state of the Niger Delta Development Commission could not win the support of lawmakers. An number state has been recognized or gazetted as NDDC as one of the NDDC states having been contributing to federation accounts vis-a-vis -vis the oil companies in Anambra states doesn't align with the history behind the establishment of the NDDC. Those who are in support of the argument that this bill be now read a second time to go for second reading say aye. Those again say nay. The next have it. Senate has resolved to invite the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory and the Commissioner of Police following a motion from Senator Ned Muku over the kidnap of his senior legislative aide and others. Senate has approved the removal of Babatunde Irukara as the Chief Executive of Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission as requested by President Tunubu which is in line with the provisions of the Act. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NTA News. And the calls for the federal government to speed up implementation of a 2024 budget. Details in a moment. In the light of shifting global and domestic economic realities, experts in financial and economic matters are calling on the federal government to first track the implementation of the 2024 budget towards attaining the Sustainable Development Goals. This was record at a one-day summit on the implementation of this year's budget jointly organized by the Nigerian Economic Society, the National Institute for Legislative and Demo Democratic Studies. News in Abuja. Mohammed Rabiu and the reports. The 2024 budget was passed on December 30, 2023, by the National Assembly and assented to by President Tinubu January 2, 2024. As parliamentarians, it will also afford us with the opportunity to prospect ideas. 
This summit seeks to fast track the implementation of the budget in tandem with the current economic realities. Experts say two months down the line, the budget predicated on assumptions on key parameters have changed significantly, which may likely impact on the actual implementation of the 2024 budget. This seminar will therefore help to provide insight on the kind of challenges to anticipate for the 2024 fiscal year, contextualize the implement implications for implementing the 2024 budget, and make recommendations on the way forward. At the time the budget was signed into law, the assumptions were that oil price would be 77.96 dollars per barrel, oil production of 1.78 million barrels per day, a GDP growth rate of 3.88%, inflation rate of 21.4%, and a exchange rate of 800 dollar per dollar. Food inflation is guaranteed. Despite all the effort of the present administration, and we should know that this decade, this problem we are facing today, is the ills that we previously avoided not taking care of. It is expected that the outcome of the summit will help to navigate the present socio-economic challenges confronting the nation and reposition the country on the path of development. Meanwhile, a three-day workshop on strengthening research capacity and grantmanship skills of NIST staff kicked off to enhance research capabilities and utilization. Muhammad Rabi Ali, NTA News. ECOWAS is encouraging citizens and groups within the sub-region to take advantage of the VATS regional market to boost economic growth. President of the ECOWAS Commission, Dr. Ali Omar Turi, at a briefing in Abuja said limitations to free movement are being tackled by the Commission. Kelvin Enwai reports. There are over 3,000 companies currently doing produce business within the ECOWA sub-region. But this is just a tip of the iceberg in terms of the potential available in the regional market for citizens of the community because the ECOWAS president believes that regional trade, which currently stands at 12 percent, can further integrate member states. He emphasized that the interventions in clearing impediments to free trade and the West African power pool are designed to boost economic growth. To support member states in their efforts to respond to food crisis, ECOWAS has established since 2016 a regional food security reserve. The reserve is fully operational with 17 interventions between 2016 and 2023 in six member states of the region, namely Burkina Faso, Cape Verde, Ghana, Mali, Niger, and Nigeria. He also spoke on ECOWAS support for democracy, noting that every country electoral body received $1 million in grants because a stable political climate is vital for the realization of ECOWAS objectives, especially its trade stabilization scheme. In Abuja, Kelvin Ewonwaye, NTA News. And uh, since ECOWAS announced the lifting of sanctions on Niger, Burkina Faso and uh, Mali, members of border communities, Border and business communities are anxious for the borders to be reopened. Correspondent Usman Abdullahi Shehu was at uh, Kamba in Kepi State, which shares boundaries with the Niger Republic. It has been seven months since ECOWAS sanctioned Niger Republic, Burkina Faso and Mali member nations, where the military seized power after several years of democratic rule. This decision was to call the junta leaders to order to return democracy back to the countries. It has really affected our business from all angles. No supply of goods, no patronage. It has affected us to the extent that even two square meals is impossible in most households. Some of us that usually do three to four business trips in Niger every week, it is hardly we can do a single trip now. They recall with nostalgia how the sanctions did not only cripple economic activities in the area, but also affected their social lives. I have relatives out there. To reach them now is a serious challenge. When NTA News visited Kambo Border Post, 
the gate was still closed as the Nigerian Customs and Immigration Services remained steadfast to ensure compliance of the previous ECOWAS directive. Uh, when we met with the officials of the Nigerian Customs Service, uh, they informed us that they had the news uh, of uh, lifting of sanction uh, by the ECOWAS, but uh, an official statement is, is yet to reach them, thus they are waiting for an official uh, statement for them to reopen the border. From Kamba, Usman Abdullah Shehu, NTA News. All right, thank you for that report. And we go to Lagos, where President Bola Ahmed Tinubu will inaugurate the Lagos Rail Line Mass Transit today. And uh, Musa Toliat is there. Hello, Musa. We are here in Lagos anticipating the arrival of Mr. President, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, for the official inauguration of the Red Line Mass Transit. Now, this Red Line Mass Transit is a 37 kilometer rail route that actually is expected to be a game changer in the multimodal transportation system in Lagos State. And the train is expected to move at least 500,000 people on daily basis in Lagos State and it's going definitely going to change the mode of transportation in Lagos State. I have the Commissioner for Information and Strategy in Lagos State here who is going to shed more light on the Red Line Rail Transit. Sir, today is the D-Day, Red Line Rail Transit going for inauguration, sir. Well, for me, for Lagosians, it's a very big day. But first we have to thank God that this day has come. It's a day that uh, we all look forward to. When Mr. Babajide Sonwolu, the governor, did the groundbreaking for the red line on April 15, 2021, he said it was going to be completed during his tenure. And here we are today, it's completed. And Mr. President, who conceived the whole idea of a mass transit rail in Lagos, is here to declare it open. So for Mr. Sonwolu and Dr. Kadri Obafemi Amsat administration, it's a day of fulfillment, it's a day of honor, it's a day of dignity for them. For Mr. President, today he should be feeling very happy, like a father who has a newborn baby to be no named. And he will be sitting down there to give the name to the newborn baby. So for Mr. President, it's also a day of fulfillment. I mean, a dream becoming reality. And for Lagosians, it's a day of joy because it's going to be transformative. It's going to change the face of transportation in Lagos. From uh, Agbado all the way in Ogun State to Oyebo. It's about 32 minutes. By bus, at times you can spend three hours, you can spend four hours. So for us in Lagos, it's a game changer. All right, 500,000 passengers per day. How possible is that? How is it going to be possible with the red line? Oh, it's uh, possible. In fact, when the red line is fully operational, when you do the second phase and all of the other things you need to do is going to be taking about a million. It's commodious, roomy, expansive, big, and efficient. Okay. How many services are we going to expect in a day? As many as possible, but all I know is that uh, for at the beginning, it's going to be running every 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes that you wait to find a train. Then later, it will become every 10 minutes. Every 10 minutes that you wait, a train must come. So you don't have to, you can plan your journey, you can be relieved of the stress that you go through now by waiting for the bus. I know the, the, the wait for the red line is now over. It is now a reality. Now, how affordable is it going to be for commuters in Lagos State? Well, it's going to be affordable. Like the blue line, it's going to be affordable. People know how much they buy fuel, they know how much stress they go through, traveling all the way from Agbado to Oyibo. And now all of that stress will be taken away, all of the pains will be taken away, all of the bumpy ride will be taken away. So in terms of Naira and Kobo, it's not going to break anybody's uh, pocket. But then, the relief that we are going to get, the stress that we are going to take away, and then the dignity under which we'll be riding, I mean, the comfort, the coziness, these are things that you cannot even begin to quantify in terms of Naira and Kobo. Thank you very much. We'll come back to you later. All right, you heard it from the Commissioner of Information and Strategy in Lagos State. Is this a game changer in transportation system in Lagos State? Comfort.
Um, from what uh, he's, he has said there, it's going to shape the future of transportation in, in Lagos with 500,000 people expected to be transported every 15 minutes. But what routes are we looking at? What routes is the line going to be applying? Okay, the, the, the route is coming from Alagbado. Alagbado is basically very, very much of a part of Ogo State to Onyibo, in the heart of Lagos State. Now, in between, you have about eight uh, train stations. Now, those train stations are strategically located in some communities that are densely populated. So, you can imagine the kind of population that would benefit from taking the train from Oyibo to Alagbado and then back from that route to Oyibo. Thank you so much, uh, Musa Toliat from Lagos there, giving us an update on the rail line that will be inaugurated today by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Thank you, Musa. Thank you very much. Nigerian Labour Congress has commended the professional conduct of security personnel during its nationwide uh, protest. President of the Union, Joseph Ajero, gave the commendation at a press conference in Abuja after the NLC National Executive Council revealed the conduct of the protest. And he said reports across the country indicate that the security formations provided cover for the protesting workers, which was instrumental to the peaceful industrial action across the country. We'll give them pass mark. In fact, even the police and security agencies, if, if that of Kano issued a statement commending our own conduct. Yes. It was such a symbiotic you know, relationship that produced and that ensured that a new Nigerian is possible. For the Nigerian police, the DSS, their conduct, as far as yesterday's performance was, was above, above board. Assessment Ajiro added that the protest was a success as the union and its allies were able to pass a message to the government on the state of the nation. That's the news. Many thanks for watching. I am Comfort and Modu. I'll be back with the news update.